Hey everybody, welcome to a great video because we are out here in Fort Worth, Texas with Brian Kendrick from Premier Air Charter and we are doing a little mini series here called Plane Hunter where we show you what it's like to buy a private jet. And Brian here was in the previous video, a lot of you guys watched it, and Brian, you've bought a new plane. We have. Just one. Yeah. Actually, maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> now, buying a plane is not at all like buying a car. It's going to be a huge learning experience for me, but uh, we got a number of planes behind us, and one of these in frame right now is the plane that we're going to take delivery of. That's correct. So let's walk over and, and take a look at it. So this is where the car guy and me is going to come through. Okay. Does a plane like this have a title? This is the, the nicest 6 I've ever seen, and our charter customers are going to love it. There's just something so cool about being able to lay down mid-flight. Hidden away is a TV. <laughs> Check that out. A little sharp TV. How many planes do you think you've purchased over the years? Good to put a I, number on I it. I stopped counting in the mid-90s at 600. Wow. So Brian, tell me a little bit about Premier Air Charter. What are we doing here? Well, Premier Air Charter is a part 135 air carrier which allows us to sell hours on the aircraft. So if you don't own an airplane, you come to us and you, and you charter the airplane at an hourly rate and we can take you anywhere you need to go. Wow, so when you're buying a new plane, what are you looking for? Are you looking for a propeller plane? Are you looking for a jet? We started with the propeller airplanes yeah. and we've moved up through into the jet aircraft now. Um, the company we bought four years ago and, and we've just been adding aircraft as we've been having the need for it. So we had the King Airs to start with, we progressed to the Citations which you wrote on not too long ago and uh, our customer base is asking us to come up with something that's a little <laughs> bit heavier and can go a little farther so we've ended up with the Challenger that you got behind us. So you've been doing this for something like 40 years. Uh, coming up to 40 years. Do you still get excited when you take delivery oh, you have, of a brand new plane? You have, you have no idea. It's, it's like Christmas morning right now. All right, Brian, so this is it. We're standing in front of your new airplane. What are we standing in front of? This is a Challenger 6013R. It's the last of the 601 series before they went to the Challenger 604. This airplane, you can't tell by looking at it, was built in 1995. Wow. So from a from a car perspective, you, your mind goes, that's a really old car. Well, for aviation, it's not that old. Um, this has been a one owner aircraft since new. Um, it's had one group of mechanics on it since new. The records on it are as impeccable as the aircraft look. It's, it's, it's some of the best records I've ever seen. And that's, in our view, the value of the aircraft because we can, we know how much a paint job costs, you know how much an interior costs, but if they haven't done things correctly with respect to the maintenance on it, there, there's no budget that you can set aside that will allow for that to be fixed. You have to buy them well to start with. And that's what this airplane is. Well, Brian, I have to say, I thought there'd be more books. It's just like four well, books. Isn't that amazing? Well, when you when you carve out all of the work orders and all of the and all the, the paperwork I towards like the 8130s and all that stuff, there's 10 books just on the other side of the hangar. It comes down to basically five books. And this is the actual, these this is the gold right here. So there's the logs. So like here's and this is this goes back to the when brand new. It, it was built so the data manufacturer it's, it was built in Canada. So yeah. they put the 20 December 1994. And wow. then and then here's where they did the certification and, and made it an airplane. So I'm looking at this thinking there's only four books, but that whole card out there, is that for that one plane? It's, it's all for that one airplane. So they will oh, wow. they will like this work order here. And what I was doing when I went through the their logs is about every third or fourth one I would pull the would pull the work order, make sure that it ties to this log entry, make sure that the things they talk about in the log entry correspond with the work order. That's why it takes so long. It is it's, it was almost a week on this going through literally page by page, verifying that everything that it says it does, it's actually had and it all lines up. So this is where the car guy and me is gonna come through. Okay. Does a plane like this have a title? 
It does. There is a title. There is. Oh, really? And it's recorded with the FAA. Okay. It's. I would say it's probably more like a house transaction than it is a car transaction. Yeah. But but there's still a, a very good record, and it's all done through the FAA. So that enormous cart of mm -hmm. papers comes with us. Is there? Yeah, it comes with us. Is there one piece of paper that's the most important, or one section? It's all pretty important. Okay. You've got, you've got <laughs> when the airplane's born. It, it's given a certificate of airworthiness. Right. And that's on the aircraft, and that is always on the aircraft. So that stays, it never leaves the airplane unless the FAA walks up and removes it. Oh, that's bad news. It's bad news. You've had a bad day. Yeah. Um, you get uh, what's called occasionally ramp checked by the FAA. They'll come out and they'll want to see your pilot's licenses. They'll want to see all your paperwork. And you've got to have your registration. You've got to have your C of A. You've got to have your, um, there's a, just a whole you know, line of uh, documents you're, you're required to have on the aircraft at all times. So when you are out there shopping for an elite private jet, are there like websites that specialize in selling? Mm -hmm. Are there dealers? How did you find this airplane? There are websites and, and there are dealers. And, and there's also been doing this for nearly 40 years. So I put the word out to the group that I know. Um, I also track every aircraft in the world. So I sent out uh, emails and said, hey, we're looking for an airplane. You know, it just happened to be for sale. And then um, depending upon what kind of return we get from that, we'll actually get on the phone and start calling people and saying, hey, you own this type of airplane. We're looking for one. Would you consider selling it? So now, Brian, before you take delivery of this plane, you probably want to make sure that everything is as advertised, right? Correct. And does that start with like a pre-flight? Bobby picked it up on the East Coast and flew it in, so he checked systems. And then I spent two days going through all the records. And, and then we have somebody that from, you know, front to back, top to bottom, and just checking systems and stuff like that, making sure everything works like it should. This pre-flight that we're about to do will verify those systems again just to make sure that um, we got everything in place like we're supposed to. I mean, is it like when you're buying a, a used car, you want to take it to a mechanic for like a, a pre-delivery? Is it kind Correct. of a similar thing? Same thing. The, the difference is these are fifty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars when you take them in, <laughs> <laughs> and, and it takes you know a month. So Brian, who are our pilots today? We've got. Bobby Thrall, who's our Director of Operations for Premier Air Charter. And um, we've got Joey Spell up on the, on the flight deck as a first officer. Bobby's just doing a, a general walk around. This airplane hasn't flown in about six weeks. Okay. And there's been lots of mechanics touching it. Yeah. So he's going to go through and, and look to see what needs to be done, make sure all the fasteners are in, make sure that everything's where it's supposed to be, and uh, just have a general look around, make sure that birds haven't made any nests. Um, there's just all kinds of stuff that needs to be looked at before you can go fly the airplane. So by the time the paperwork is signed, you, uh, you've looked through the books and we're at this stage. Is everything pretty much set or do you still find surprises every now and then? Always find surprises. Yeah. The stuff that you're going to find is, is generally minimal and generally stuff that we can resolve, especially with the next door to maintenance. Now, that being said, we may jump in the aircraft and, and have some sort of fault that doesn't allow us to fly today. Right. We are not going to push an airplane to fly it when it's not airworthy. It's, right. it's not going to happen. We are not going to. I, I tell our guys, I'm, I'm never going to make that phone call. We're not doing it. Yeah. So, we hope we're going to fly today. <laughs> But it's never a certainty. It's never, a, look, I, I, I tell everybody, look, until we're, we're born down the runway, until the wheels are in the belly, we're not sure we're gonna go fly yet. yet. One, two, three, oh, great. <laughs> Sending it to 10, hasta luego. <laughs> oh, <see. laughs> so I'm here with Bobby, he's a gentleman flying us home today, and I gotta ask, do you ever get nervous flying a, a new air, aircraft? I guess a little bit just uh, the fear of the unknown, but generally, you know, you check the maintenance records, you know a lot about the airplane before you pick it up. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, I try to fly it in the daytime and during good weather yeah. on the first flight. So Brian, we stepped on the inside of your new aircraft. Is this kind of what you're expecting? Are you happier? Are you 
A little concern? Um, what do you think on the I'm, inside? I'm tickled pink. This is the, the nicest 601 I've ever seen, and our charter customers are going to love it. So generally what I do when, I, when I'm coming out to an aircraft to look at it for the first time, I've been out here three times to look at this airplane. Okay. Um, I generally walk out and I just I do a quick walk around the airplane um, just to see if there's anything that stands out. And then I'll, I'll walk through the cabin and just, just have a general look at it. And then I lodge that in the memory bank and I go inside and I, and I go through all the records and that can take a week. Have you ever been looking through records and just see like some major red flag you, you weren't expecting? <laughs> so um, you met my daughter the last time you we were out here. Um, she was in high school and we flew all the way to Atlanta. Red eye, land at five o'clock in the morning, drive for hours, get to the airplane did my walk around, walked inside, and it had just come out of a heavy inspection. And I opened up the logbooks, and it was clear that these logbooks were completely fabricated. Fabricated? Completely fake. And I closed the books, I thanked the guy we got in the car and drove away. Wow. And and um, I've done that more times than I care to count. But if this airplane, if these records weren't right, even though it's a beautiful airplane, we would have walked from it. And one uh, Alpha Alpha uh, would be AP1 for performance yep. takeoff. Clear up that. All right, here we go. We're heavy, huh? in the air, I want to interrupt this video and go over the top 10 cool gadgets and gizmos in this Challenger 601. Starting with this partition door, push a button and then this beautiful wooden door glides out. Now you can hide yourself from the rest of the cabin. Number nine, this is the big kahuna chair. So this is typically where the primary charter guest sits and these captain's chairs are so comfortable fully leather line with this gold handle. Now, if I pull up on this handle, the seat slides forward and back, but it also extends outwards from the window so you have a little bit more breathing room. And if I pull up on it again, I can even swivel it so I can see the other people in this seating zone. But check this out. If I move the seat all the way forward and then recline it, I can not only go this far, but I can go all the way back. And underneath here, I can extend a footrest, fully leather lined, of course, and now I've engaged full-on recline mode. Number eight, next to the chair of the primary guest, you have this little wooden panel. And when you push in on that, it reveals the primary control zone. So not only can I select and control the audio in here, but I can even change the lighting and adjust the temperature all from this little panel. Toward the rear of the airplane, you're gonna find this incredible fully wood table with this gold inlay, couple cup holders, and you even have these panels which fold out to make it a little easier to get in and out of the seats. But the best part is underneath here is a little lever which the stewardess could help you with. And then when you pull that back, the table actually extends downward and you can convert this into a bed. How cool is that? All right, next up, my favorite feature at number six, it's gotta be the couch. Now, of course, it's very comfortable, but there's just something so cool about being able to lay down mid-flight. Number five, the lavatory. It's incredibly spacious in here considering the size of the plane and everything is lined in wood and marble. Number four, in the restroom here, we have the toilet, which is hidden behind this leather wrapped surface. Number three is the refreshment center, which is of course completely lined in wood. We have controls up here for the various functions throughout the plane, but check this out. So not only do we have a full fridge with an ice box, we also have an area down here for catering. And behind this panel, there's even a warming oven so that if you're on a longer flight, maybe across most of the US, you can have warm food for your trip. 
And then throughout here, of course, you got various places for fancy cups and the like. Underneath this panel, check this out. You have a full-on microwave and areas for cups. And then under this panel is a coffee maker. Number two, of course, is that this plane comes equipped with a full 110 volt outlet so you can plug stuff in and integrated Wi-Fi. But my number one favorite feature on this plane is the flat floor and the tall roof. So I am six feet tall and check this out. I can still stand up perfectly straight without scraping my head on the ceiling. And the bonus feature on this plane in this little bag hidden away is a TV. <laughs> check that out. Little sharp TV that just plugs in there and then you can watch TV midair. So Brian, I think this is a really cool story because we're standing next to another Challenger yes. that you used to own. Uh -huh. Why have you gone from this older Challenger to the newer Challenger? Is there really that much of a difference between the planes? Well, from a passenger perspective, no. But from a operational perspective, absolutely. This is a 1983 airplane. Most of our customers prefer a 1990 or newer, okay. which, which was the first flag that we threw, if you will. This airplane has engines that are required to be overhauled at a certain TBO, time between overhaul, and that engine is about 10 hours away from that TBO, which means that engine must come off the aircraft and must be overhauled. Mm. It's also coming up to 120-month inspection, which is a lot of money to do. So we sat down from a business perspective and looked at it and said what it's going to cost to put this aircraft back up to spec mechanically, nothing to do with the cosmetics or anything like that. What are we going to have at the end of it? We're going to have an airplane that needs paint, needs interior at some point, and it's still an 83 where our passengers or our clients prefer a 1990 or newer. So that's what motivated our decision to say, all right, let's go out and see if we can find something that's a bit newer. So this plane could be reconditioned. It sure could be. And it could live a whole nother life. Absolutely. But from your standpoint, yeah. it just doesn't make... It's dollars and cents. we got to be able to make money with it. So these overhauls we're talking, they've got to be hundreds of thousands they're, of dollars. They're, it's, it's over a million bucks. Wow. That's yeah, amazing. It's, it's, it's a lot of money. It really is. It's a lot of money. So this plane, what do you think is going to happen to this plane? Unfortunately, and it... And it they're going to tear it apart and sell it as bits. Okay. So they're going to take the engines off. They actually come off next week. Um, you'll see when you get inside, they're already taking the radios out of the aircraft. Yeah. Um, they'll pull the whole interior out, and, they'll, and it'll it'll live on in probably 50 other serial numbers. So it sounds like there's a huge community and there's a huge market there, for used airplane parts. It, there is. It's very specific. Um, as each part is removed, it has to be inspected. It's it's tagged. Um, there's a thing called an 8130, which you have to show traceability back to birth and all these things. So all those records that, that we've looked at over the last couple of times, those will go with the part that shows when it was born, how many cycles it's got on it, how many hours are on it, and all that stuff. And then the new owner, when they install it, will log that and it'll become part of that aircraft record. So Brian, this is why that huge stack of books is so important. Correct. Because these airplanes get torn apart, it sounds like pretty frequently, is that correct? They do. There's an inspection program. This airplane here, the Gulfstream 4, which is the airplane that we're going to take delivery of here in about a month, is just coming out of what's called a 5,000 cycle inspection. It's the big one-ish. And there's a cycle, that one happens to be every 5,000 times the wheels go up and down. Yeah. You take the landing gear off, you overhaul it. You look over the whole airplane, you're looking for corrosion, you're looking for cracks, you're doing all kinds of stuff. This airplane went down for this event in about around Christmas time. Wow. And we're now towards the, you know, we're touching on May here. Yeah. And it's just now coming out of the event. So it's, it's a major event. The, the log entries for this will probably be a foot thick when it's all said and done. So let's talk a little bit about the used market for a Challenger. So you mentioned there's only a couple of 601s yeah. on the market, but what do they typically run if you were to buy one? Well, the, the, the 601 range is kind of in that very low million dollar mark, up to as high as like four and a half million, depending upon where the airplane's at. 
in its engine life, where it's at in its total time, what kind of history that it's had. You know, that this is pretty rare for a 1995 airplane to be a one owner, but you know, that all impacts the value of the airplane. Yeah. And then the 604s kind of run in that six to eight million dollar range. Okay, interesting. Now, as a charter operator, you offer a number of different size planes that have a number of capabilities. In the last episode, we featured the Citation 10. Correct. Um, is this going to rent for more or less typically than a Citation 10? Slightly more okay. than the Citation 10. Um, and the reason for it, even though this is considered also a super mid, it, it, when it was born, it was considered a heavy jet. You'll notice some differences between the, the Citation 10 and this airplane. This one's got a flat floor. This one actually has 12 seats in it. And um, there's quite a lot more room. The lavatory is much larger. This aircraft does come with a flight attendant. And, and all of those things add up to the aircraft being worth more to the retail charter customer. What is your charter customer for this aircraft? Is it a, someone on business? Is it a family on vacation? It's, it's about a 50-50 mix. We, uh, we took a group and our other challenger to, uh, to Mexico this weekend there, Thursday to Sunday. And it was a, um, a team building thing for his his group. Oh wow! Um, and we do that a lot, where they'll take some of the management and and run them down someplace and just kind of spend some time to to do some corporate type functions. Um, this type of airplane, you know, a lot of um, I know with entrepreneurs they take their families um, out to you know, Bozeman for the weekend or up to Aspen to go skiing or something like that, and then. A lot of it through the week is I'm working. It's, we got to get to Chicago, we got to get to Atlanta, you know, got to hit Miami, we got to come home, we got to do it all in a day and a half. We talked about this a little bit, but 40 years on, how many planes do you think you've purchased over the years? You had to put a I, number on I it. I stopped counting in the mid 90s at 600. Wow. And yeah, it's been a lot because because we wholesale so many overseas. Right. But um, the last twenty, I bet you it's been a couple hundred at least, and they've been all, almost all jets. And you still get just as excited uh, now. It is so exciting. I mean, you, you think about all the pieces that had to come together to make this happen today, and and it's just it's just it's just like a little symphony. I just love it. It's, it's so exciting. And at the end of the day, you can park it on the ramp and look at it and say, look what we did. Yeah. You know, it's pretty dramatic. That's cool. Now, what is it going to take to get this um, plane into your customers' hands? We have to go through what's called conformity. Our director of maintenance will um, will go through the airplane, go through all those records that we loaded into the tail of the airplane, put together a package, present it to the FAA. Um, they'll come out and look at the airplane. Um, our pilots are already approved on this type of airplane because they're switching one out for the other. And um, we expect in the next 30 days this should be in revenue. Wow. 30 days. 30 days, yeah. That's fantastic. And if people out there want to potentially charter this plane, how can they find your company? PremierAirCharter.com is the website. And everything's on there. You can even book the trips on there now. And I will say, after the past two and a half hours, I've never experienced a better way to travel. It's pretty neat, huh? It's been absolutely incredible. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't thank you enough for this thank opportunity. You. No, thank you, sir. I mean, it's like it's... This plane was built, like you said, in the mid-90s. It feels brand new. It really and does. And because of all those records, you have confidence flying this plane that you know it's been taken care of and that you know it's in good hands. It's pretty exciting, huh? It's pretty exciting. I just wait for the next one, another six weeks probably. Well, hopefully we might be able to, <laughs> if you like this, get your friends to watch this and maybe we'll fly down and feature that plane as well. Looking forward to it. Wow, Brian. So as a premier air charter guest, you leave the plane, you are greeted by a mat, and, and then, then you, you get, go right in your vehicle. You go right in your vehicle and off you go. Incredible. It takes 20 seconds. Well, sir, I'm jealous of your new purchase. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Check out TFL Car. Please let us know if you like the series. I think you will. <laughs> and we'll see you in another one. Bye-bye.